Hello friends and welcome to Knit a Rainbow. My name is Kimberly McAlinden and I'm so excited to start my weekly podcasts again. I am trying to use a different camera but it doesn't seem to be working so it looks like it's going to be this camera. So let's just do a little adjusting. Hi, if you can hear me, oh my gosh, I forgot to put a sweater here. Oh well, uh, say hi in the chat. I'd love to uh, say hello to you. It's so nice to see people popping on. So let's talk about where I've been. I have been, I have embarked on this really incredible new, I'm turning my camera off, this really new uh, to me business of knitting. I mean, I've always been in the knitting business, but it hasn't been my own business, right? So it hasn't been me creating sales and, and doing that kind of thing. So it's been very, very interesting. Uh, I did hire someone to help me. So if you see some different things, that's because I've I've hired an incredible person that uh, is helping me. So I'm really excited. I have a new website, stillknitarainbow.com, and uh, it's it's been really fun. So I, I cannot wait to start sharing all the exciting things that are coming up for me. Um, so let's just get right into it. Summer knitting. Do you guys knit in the summer? I do. I knit all the time. And usually in the summer, I'm knitting for things that are happening in the winter. <laughs> so it does get a little bit hot. Um, I did post that on my Instagram. I think, yeah, I think it's an Instagram reel that I posted. And it was a, uh, it was me uh, doing, uh, I put everything in a pillowcase. And the reason for that is the wool doesn't, isn't, hi, Gail. Oh, you, yeah, you knit in the summer, me too. Um, and so I put things in a pillowcase. Um, and I love to do that because it, it doesn't make it itchy. And then also when you're by the pool or you're outside and you have sunscreen on, the sunscreen doesn't get on your knitting, which I forgot to say in the reel. But I'm going to show you what I finished. I finished this sweater, which is, it hasn't been blocked yet, but it is one of my Rhinebeck sweaters. Hi, Regina. Um, and I can't wait. I, there's a little something extra that's going to happen to this uh, if you so choose. And I can't wait to get started, but I'm going to block it first. I don't have a name for this sweater. So if you have a name, let me know. Put it in the comments. I would love to see. I'll probably have a contest that goes on, but this is going to go for test knitting probably in uh, either later this afternoon or tomorrow. So if you are a test knitter of mine or you would like to be a test knitter, uh, stay tuned to my Instagram. Um, and, uh, and also, if you would like, go ahead and uh, sign up for my newsletter. Um, and all of that will be in the description box. The newsletter um, will have extra discounts. It also has any information about things that I'm gonna do. And um, it's really good to be on my mailing list. <laughs> anyway, here's the sweater. It has traditional bell sleeves. I. I love these sleeves. So it's a traditional bell. And look at the pretty color work, um, which is not really color work. So if you've never done color work before, um, then you'll be fine with this. It actually is a slip stitch pattern. With anybody that's taken a workshop from me, you know that I'm in love with my slip stitch patterns. So um, it is so much fun to do. I love that the top here has uh, has pearl and it just kind of curls under. Obviously I have to weave in my ends, but here it is. 
I'm so excited for it. I'm so excited for it. So um, what I am planning on doing, um, I don't know, should I keep it a secret? Oh, hi, Steph. Oh, you know, well, they, there will be um, a workshop coming up if you want to do that, um, coming up in the winter time for, uh, for color work, if you wanted to do that. Sp Hi, Regina. Speaking of workshops, I have a brand new workshop. I'm going to show the sweater. I would have worn it, but it's summertime. <laughs> And I'm not going to wear it now. But um, anyway, so the test knit for this is going to happen. And I'll tell you what's going to, what I'm going to do on it. I'm going to embroider on it. Now, this is a beautiful sweater to wear just on your own, right? Like if you just want to wear this, it's a gorgeous sweater. Look. So it's worsted weight yarn. This is Primrose's new yarn, Forage, with which is a worsted weight yarn. It is also spun um, in the, uh, oh, I can't think of it. It's not worse. It's not, it's woolen spun, which means that when you're spinning and you're spinning worsted, that means that all of your, all of the, all of the pieces or all of the fibers are all aligned the same way so everybody is in their same way and you're putting it into into a you know spinning it but when it's when it is woolen spun that's when all everything is willy-nilly everything is going crazy and then it's spun which means there's a lot more air trapped in the specific yarn oh here i have it right here uh and so what happens is you get a warmer garment that's lighter, right? So this is um, 100 grams. It's 280 yards for a worsted yarn. That's a lot of yardage. And this is the color dark room that I did my sample in. Um, and this is Primrose, Kelsey, and Brooklyn Tweed. So this is their collaboration. Her colors are spectacular. And um, so that's this sweater. But I don't have a name for it. But I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. So you can wear this as it is, right? You can wear it. It's so, it's, it's so fun. Um, but what I'm going to do is embroider on it. Uh, so I'll probably embroider, um, I don't know. I, I'm going to have fun. Uh, and so, you know, I was calling it the doodle sweater, but that kind of sounds yucky. And then I was thinking maybe it would be like a graffiti sweater, you know, like fun graffiti, but I can't think of a name. So if you have a name, I will send out a prize if, if I pick your name. I'll, I'll put that out on Instagram as well when I'm done with this. So I love it. It is a, um, it's a, Yep, it's a yoke sweater. Uh, and this hasn't even been blocked yet. And look how beautiful it is. Mm -mm -mm. So the bottom is just uh, ribbing. And I love it. Yay! I love the color. Isn't it pretty? Uh, and so this is her worsted yarn, the forage. This is her homestead sport weight yarn. And the reason why there's also homestead worsted. So don't worry if you wanted to do that. But the reason why I used sport and not worsted, the reason why I, I, I exchanged that is that look how it pulls it in. Now, it still is a beautiful, substantial collar, but see how it just no naturally pulls in the neckline? I love that. So this is knit on a six. This is knit on an eight. So if eight is your favorite, uh, if eight is your favorite needle, then this is the sweater for you. This is also knit on an eight. So it is just, it's four and a half stitches to the inch. All the information is going to be uh, out on Instagram or uh, in the newsletter that's going to follow this weekend. And Kelsey has generously said that if you are chosen as a test knitter, she's giving 20% off the yarn. So if you uh, are chosen to be a test knitter, you would get 20% off if you use the forage yarn. 
So exciting. I love working. I just love working with uh, yarn dyers. And it's just, it's been amazing. So that's that. <clears throat> what do you think about the time for this? I think that, um, meaning the, the time for this podcast, I think it's really early. However, <laughs> I don't want it to get too hot up in my studio. So in the winter time, in the fall and the winter, I'll bring it back to a time, you know, like noon or one when people are at lunch. But for now, for the summer, it's going to be 1030. Um, okay, so what have I been knitting this summer? I test knit a couple things, which I loved. The first one, everybody's talking about it. This is the Caitlin Hunter uh, Alpine Bloom Sweater. I knit this in wishbone merino linen. And let me tell you what an amazing experience it was knitting with Lily's yarn. It, it, this is a single ply. It is so fabulous. I love it. It's so amazing. Uh, and this is Caitlin Hunter's pattern. Uh, and I, when I was knitting it, I thought, oh my gosh, there isn't enough contrast between the color work and the yarn. But I, I foraged ahead. I just kept <laughs> I foraged ahead. That must be on my brain. And boy, am I happy with the results. I love this sweater. It is so pretty. In fact, I may take these sleeves out and knit the sleeves long sleeve so that I can wear it in for, you know, not just the summer. And I think I have enough yarn to do that. I'll have to double check. But boy, do I love this sweater. Um, it's been folded up, so it uh, it's a little, but I wanted to show you my floats because some of you haven't done any color work knitting. This is the inside of the sweater. I love my floats. <laughs> so the trick with floats is that you don't want it to be, some knitters do it where their floats, they, they do an an inch or only three stitches, right? Like they'll carry their yarn every three stitches. I choose to do it every, depending on the pattern, how many stitches to the inch. So if it's six stitches to the inch, I will actually go five or six stitches before I will catch my yarn because it's an inch, right? An inch is an inch. Um, and the reason why we want to do that is so that we don't have these really long floats. And what would happen with the long floats is that, uh, you know, you'd catch it on your rings, um, they can pull on your jewelry, uh, and that kind of thing. So you don't want that. So that's the inside. This is the Alpine Bloom sweater by Caitlin Hunter. I didn't do any modifications. I actually knit it as, uh, as written check that. I made it a little bit longer. So my favorite length from the underarm to my hip is 13 and a half inches. So that's what I usually do. I, you know, if it's, if it's a cropped sweater, you know, like real the crop sweaters are really popular. And uh, what I say in all my workshops is that a, 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 a pattern is like a recipe, right? Like if you're making banana bread and it says put chocolate chips in the banana bread and you don't like banana bread, don't, I mean, you don't like chocolate chips, don't put the chocolate chips in it, right? If you, if you're not comfortable with your, with a sweater being cropped and you like your sweaters longer, then by all means, make your sweater longer, especially if it's stockinette where it's very easy to simply add length, right? To get more in depth on sweaters, fitting sweaters and all that stuff, I do go over that in my workshop. Um, and so the newest workshop is coming up August 24th and that's gonna be for the In Bloom sweater. So let's look at the pretty In Bloom sweater. I wish I could have put it on today, but it is summer and the one that I knit is in mohair doubled and I just didn't wanna put it on. 
So here it is. This is the pullover version. So look, I just love this. This is yarn that was specifically dyed by Victoria of Vita Lifestyle for this sweater. So we collaborated and uh, back in March, she had a sale of this sweater, a pre-order for this yarn for this sweater. And the pattern uh, came out. Uh, so you can absolutely purchase the pattern, but now the workshop is going to go on. And what, what would you learn in the workshop? In the workshop, you will learn how to size this to fit your body. You will also learn how to do a cast on um, where it's a folded over collar. So you're going to learn that. If you're not familiar with a, um, a saddle shoulder, you're going to learn the saddle shoulder. Look at that. Here is the sleeve has a pretty pleat in it. You will also learn the invisible seam. You will learn um, increasing, decreasing techniques. You will learn uh, German short rows, how to, uh, how to work those, um, and then how to resolve them in the round. There's a little sneaky trick that happens. Um, and also with the, with the price of the workshop, the pattern is included. And the pattern is $10 if you wanted to buy it on Ravelry. And the reason for that is that the pattern is written for the pullover version, which I have here, the, um, the cardigan. So it's a pullover, a cardigan, short sleeves, or three-quarter sleeves. So that's you have four different sweaters that you can knit with one pattern. Uh, and I am definitely going to knit another one. Now, I happen to be a pullover girl. I love pullover sweaters. I love, I love that. Um, but I think this time I'm going to knit the well, I'll probably have to knit both because I'm going to be doing all the technique videos. Um, but I just, I, I love it. I love it. Uh, this yarn, for those of you that are going to ask, is not available now. You can get other colors of Victoria's yarn. She actually is doing her coffee collection. Her pre-order is, uh, it's going to close soon. But she does have lots of mohair. This is mohair held double. Now, when this was test knit, some test knitters didn't want to knit it with mohair, so they knit it with other yarns, and it turned out spectacular. So the gauge on this is, I think it's four and a quarter stitches to the inch, or four stitches to the inch. And so if you were to use a DK weight yarn or a worsted weight yarn, as long as you got gauge, we would be able to knit this sweater. I think I'm going to knit one of them in this yarn right here, I happen to have enough. Uh, this is Gephardt's Kid Seda. This is uh, their Kid Mohair. And it's just, a, it's a pretty cream color. It's not white, white, it's cream. Um, it's kind of getting blown out here. Maybe I can, it's, it's a pretty cream color. So I'm gonna use that. And um, I can't wait. Oh, Steph is saying that she can't wait to knit it and the yarn is so beautiful. This is beautiful yarn and it is next to the Skin Soft. Um, this also is a little bit shorter uh, crappie for me. Um, and I was a little, I was going to wear something underneath it, but I put it on when Victoria and I were going to do the, do the, the photo shoot. And she said, just wear it like that. It looks great. So that's what I did. Uh, and I love it. I love these like ballooned out sleeves. It's just, I, well, I love everything I do. <laughs> no, that's ridiculous. Okay. Then, uh, I did knit for Jill Zelensky of, um, Bay Fiber. Shoot, I can't remember, but I'll put it in the I'll put it in the description. I left that sweater at the beach. I've worn it a million times, uh, and so I test knit that sweater as well. So I'll talk about that next week. Um, but the other thing that I knit this summer was this. This is intarsia, and if you haven't knit intarsia yet, 
it it's it's fun it's a little challenging let me show you the other side so what happens is you have these little blips of color right so you're not going to carry your yarn across the back you're going to twist your yarn when you come to a new section so let's say we're in this section here you're going to start with this pretty um, yellow color and then when you change to the orange you're going to twist those stitches, right? Uh, Lynn says she loves this. These are her colors. Thank you, Lynn. They're my colors too. The, this yarn is from Moondrake and this is her Pika Pika. Uh, it's very, very soft. One, uh, So you're going to twist the yarn and then knit these and then twist the yarn, knit this. Now, see how here there are two oranges? These are two separate skeins. And what you do is instead of using a big old honking skein of yarn, you make little yarn butterflies. So they're hanging off. There are lots of pictures of me knitting it um, and actually me actually knitting it in my reels on Instagram. So if you're interested in that, go ahead. Uh, and then you have, I counted, there were over 250 or 240 some ends that I had to weave in on this little shawlette. It's the Flora Shawlette by Florence Sperling Studios. And let me tell you something. I, you know, it was tiny, thank goodness, because how many ends there were, but I wear this all the time. Uh, and it's just that little, little, little bit of warmth that you need when you're in the air conditioning, right? Like, you know, when you go into restaurants or you're working, it's just that little, just that, I'll put it on right now. So I like to wear it like this. It's just that little extra bit of warmth, but I've also worn it this way. Oh, there's my back. <laughs> I've also worn it this way, just kind of on my shoulders to keep me warm. You know, if I have you know, a little sleeveless sweater or something on. The sweater that I'm wearing now is my lovely tee. I have four of them. I love that pattern. But this is so much fun. Um, it's just, it's a great thing. It's actually, uh, people can't believe that I hand knit it. Oh, and I had to hand knit it with, um, straight needles. I, I started with my, with my circulars working back and forth and I had to purchase straight needles. I, it was not fun to do it on, on circular needles with all of the yarn butterflies hanging down. It just, it didn't work out for me. So, woohoo! That was so much fun. That was my first time test knitting for Florence, and it was a lovely, lovely experience. I love it. So, it was knit from the tip to the middle, increasing, and then you decreased. It took a lot more time than I thought it was going to, but the results were absolutely worth it. Okay. I also wanted to talk about when you're knitting in the summertime, if, you, if you're not doing a sweater, shawls are really fun, you know, to knit. Um, but also hats are a wonderful, wonderful thing to knit when it's the summertime. And this uh it, this time um this what am i talking about when i always knit hats with leftover yarn and this is what i like to tell all my friends that are knitters if you're knitting if you're if you're in between two sizes of a sweater and you don't and you you're like ooh you know i'm 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 kind of playing yarn chicken with how much yarn the designer says, um, buy that extra skein because with that extra skein, you'll be able to knit a hat. And how fun is it to knit a hat? It doesn't hang in your lap. It only takes a couple days. A lot of them are kind of mindless knitting and it, you know, and then you'll have a hat to match your pretty sweater. I have a free hat pattern. Uh, it is called the Marin hat. Uh, and this is a great, it's a great hat. Uh, it's been downloaded lots of times. It's, it's written for worsted weight yarn. Uh, and I just 
sorry that it's, oh, there we go. This is the color. This actually used to have a brown pom-pom on it, but my daughter started going to Virginia Tech, and so she asked for Virginia Tech color. So we switched that out. And it's very easy with these pom-poms because they're snaps. So this is her hat that I that I took for this. This is called the Marin hat for my Marin. Now, if you wait until later this afternoon and you haven't joined my mailing list, uh, I'm going to add a, a, a little um, treat for everybody. This hat is called the Emily hat. And the reason why I Emily is my niece and the reason why I named it the Emily hat is these stitches on the front here reminded me of um, an EKG. And she um, she works in uh, Boston's Children's Specialized Hospital. And uh, I just thought that that was really cool. So this is a hat pattern that I have available for sale. Uh, but I'm going to set it up that if you if you join my mailing list, then you can uh, get this hat for free as a gift. So all of that will be in the show notes. If you want to refer back tomorrow, you can. Everything will be updated. So I love this hat too. This this hat is written for DK worsted and bulky weight yarn. So you can use any yarn that you have in stash. Um, this happens to be far by wolf folk. And it was left over from a sweater that I made. I was like, oh, let me whip up a quick, quick hat. I love it. These stitches in the front here, they're, they're just, you bring them to the front and you slip stitches. I seem to be like a really big fan of slip stitch pattern. This is a slip stitch pattern. This is a slip stitch pattern. My new sweater, which we don't know what the name is yet, is a slip stitch pattern. So I seem to be a fan of, of slip stitches. You know how some designers, like they have their thing that they love, you know, like uh, Tiff Nealon loves the herringbone stitch. That seems to be. Now, what I'm currently working on, besides uh, the sweater that is nameless, <laughs> I'm also working on, do any of you do Casapinka? Hi, Debbie. It's nice to see you, too. Uh, have any of you ever done Casapinka's uh, Mystery Knit Along? I don't happen to be a huge fan of Mystery Knit Alongs because I like to know what I'm getting. Um, but I am doing her Mystery Knit Along this time because I saw a kit on Skein uh, Yarn Shop and I thought, I happen to be a purple lover now for some reason. I've gone 52 years without wearing purple. And now when I wear purple, people are like, oh my, purple people. <laughs> they seem to be like, oh my gosh, purple looks so nice on you. So I've started wearing purple, but they they showed a kit. I didn't even know that the mystery knit along was happening. And I was scrolling through Instagram and it was like, oh my gosh, I have to buy this kit. So if you are knitting the mystery knit along and you have to, and you haven't finished clue two yet. So let me explain really quickly what a mystery knit along is. Every six weeks for her, for Casapinka, she sends a new uh, clue to the pattern. Now we know it's a shawl. We know that it is a new shape for her, which is that kind of got me too. Um, and uh, every week you get a new clue. So it's been going on for two weeks and I have finished clue two. So if you haven't finished clue two, avert your eyes, look away, because I'm going to show you. This is also my first foray into Miss Babs Yarns, French Kiss. Holy cow. French Kiss? Chef's Kiss. <laughs> it's not even the weekend. Chef's Kiss for... For Miss Babs yarn, her fingering weight yarn, um, I actually used her yummy two ply, which is super wash merino. All right, here we go. Avert your eyes if you haven't done clue two yet. So it's four different colors. This was clue one. Oh, sorry, I gotta pull it. This was clue one. So this is my color A, B, C, and D. 
And it was the same thing, right? It was this the same thing. Now clue two, we turned it and picked up stitches. Then we started doing like a bunch of texture stitches and stuff like that. This clue two was really, really fun. So here I, I have it so far. And when it's blocked out, it'll, it'll all, you know, it'll all work out when it's blocked out. Um, so here is the mystery knit. Oh, I, I, Debbie, I have Debbie saying that she loves Miss Babs yarn. I've never knit with it. Oh my gosh. I'm a Babs virgin. Not anymore. Uh, but boy, I love this yarn. There's that purple. <laughs> so now I'm like purple, purple, purple. Uh, so I'm working on this. But what I've also learned is I'm not very patient when it comes to knitting. Uh, I mean, they say that you're, you have patience because you knit. Um, but I don't have patience when it comes to knitting patterns. I want my stuff. I, I want it and I want to knit it as, you know, as quickly as possible. So it's been very hard for me to wait for the next pattern or to like, or the next clue to, you know, let it, let it go ahead. If you could all do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button, if you haven't hit the thumbs up button yet, that would really uh, help out, help me out. I would really appreciate it. So if you could all hit the thumbs up button right now, thank you. I see some of you are doing it. Mwah. Kisses to you, not French kiss. Oh, hello, Melanie. Melanie says, good morning. It's nice to see you. Okay. I forgot to get it um, up here, but I'm going to show you because I don't, I, I have signed up for one test knit for um, Jamie Hoffman of Knitosophy and it's, it is absolutely beautiful. It is, um, oh my gosh, I, I can't, and I can't show you anything, but that actually used uses sugar plum circus yarn. So I'm waiting for that yarn to come. I can show you the yarn and I can show you little snippets, but I can't, I can't show that. Hi, Amy Besson. Welcome. So I'm waiting for that test knit. I'm also waiting for another color for the new sweater, uh, that shot that has, that is nameless that I, I don't have a name for, for my Rhinebeck sweater. Also, <laughs> so I'm waiting for those two yarns to come. Maybe they'll come like next week. So when I come on next Thursday, then, you know, I'll be able to show you that. So in the meantime, I'm going to be spinning some yarn because I hold the phone, friends. Go Look at that cute thing. That's a Tanny Casey bag. As I, as I, I move over here, hold the phone. Here's my lovely tea. This is Suburban Stitcher lovely tea, which I'm feeling has something on it, some sort of dinner. <laughs> Hello, Joyce, and welcome, welcome. I'm glad to have you here. Uh, you all know that I love uh, Tabitha of Long Island Yarn and Farn. I love her stuff. I love what she does. Um... I will get to that question, Debbie, in two seconds. Um, that pattern is coming out soon. Oh, sorry, Joyce. Joyce is working, so we have to be quiet. Um, Debbie Myers asks, how's the pattern coming along for Fashion School Dropout Yarn? That pattern is coming. It's coming. I'm writing it as we speak. I'm, I'm trying to get everything that I promised last year done before I start the next stuff. But so thank you so much for asking. So uh, I will be with Tabitha in September. Uh, she is doing Patty Lyons um, retreat in New Jersey, and I'm going to be working with Tabitha. So uh, there is, I don't know if you can come like for the public. I don't know if the marketplace is open for the public, but whatever. So I'm going to be there. And I designed a while ago uh, the Josie shawl, which I love. And um, I was looking for, because Tabitha's yarns are so special, 
I wanted to knit something using one skein of her yarn. And I thought, you know, and hats, yes, hats are great. But um, I wanted to try to see if my Josie shawl would work in her yarn. And it does. <laughs> So this is her fingering weight yarn. And also what was important to me was to only use one skein, right? Because it's going to be, a, you know, a luxury purchase for you. But look at how big this shawl is. With one skein, this is her fingering weight yarn. Okay. See how big it is? All right. So. On the Josie shawl, the original Josie shawl, it has three tassels um, because I love tassels. And actually, one of the tassels is is double tiered tassel. So I want I want Tabitha wanted like a special yarn to do that. And so I'm going to spin yarn. So that's what I'm going to do. It does go with my lovely tea. <laughs> Thank you for showing me. So this yarn, it's not yarn. This is called Harvest. It is super sock. Look at this, guys. It's a little blown out. Let's see. Yeah, like that's going to do anything. <laughs> um, so this is super sock. Um, it is 90% superwash merino, 10% nylon. It's so soft. So I'm going to spin this up this weekend. So stay tuned. You can see, but look at the colors. Isn't it gorgeous? I can't wait to spin it. So I'm going to do something a little funky, a little funky for me. It's not going to be a regular spin. I'm going to do a, an art yarn. Definitely going to use my electric eel wheel because I will, I'm going to go to the beach and the, the electric eel wheel is so portable and I love to use it. So, oh, that's the real color. Oh, all right. So let's see what it looks like. I'm so excited. So I'll be spinning this weekend. I'll tomorrow is today. Th today is Thursday. So tomorrow is Friday. So on Friday, I get the new, uh, the new clue for the knit along. So I'll be very excited to do that. So I'll be spinning some yarn, making some tassels. If I get the yarn, this is so soft. I love these colors. These are, you know, all growing up my whole life, the, these were my favorite colors, greens, browns, oranges. I mean, I was born in 1970. How can you expect anything less? I can't wait. So this, this is from uh, Trisha Cook of Wound Up Fiber Arts. She does her up. She used to do her updates every Saturday, which was really bad for my wallet. Now she does her updates on the 15th and the I think that the 15th of the month and the 30th, she does like two updates a month now. Um, and her stuff is so beautiful. In fact, this is a three ply spin that I did uh, with her, with this was like um, her Coriadel, I think. But um, this is a three ply. Wait, I have another one. Uh, I, I was going to do like a Guthrie with this, um, but I can't think of a main color. Anybody have any suggestions? Put that in the, um, in the comments. If you have a suggestion for a main color for this. So the colors are like really pretty green. There's, uh, there's some blue in there, like periwinkle blue. Well, you can see the colors right here. Why am I? So I'm just trying to think of something that would make this stand out and wouldn't make it look muddy. I need your help, friends. Okay. What else was I going to show you? Oh, I was just showing you that. So that's what I've been up to, friends. That has been my summer. I have been working on my brand new 
um, my brand new website, which, which my patterns still haven't come over there yet, but you know, I figure you can get them on Ravelry. That's not really that important. I've been working on the, the new workshops and the new work. The cool thing about the new workshops are, um, the lovely tea, which I have on now is going to be an evergreen course. So once, um, I get it all uploaded, I forgot to put lipstick on. Once I get it all uploaded, you'll be able to purchase that class. Um, you know, don't you always feel a little bit better with a little lipstick on? I do. Okay. It's lip gloss, but, uh, now I feel fancy. <laughs> I was going to leave and now I'm like, why should I leave? So, uh, yeah. So, the cool thing about the workshops is uh, that uh, with my new, with this new platform that I'm on, Kajabi, I'm able to. Are you kidding, Stephanie? <laughs> Thank you very much, Stephanie. Stephanie just sent me a super sticker. Thank you very much. So I am. Is it? It was the lipstick, right? The lipstick made you, made you send the super sticker. <laughs> uh, anyway. I, uh, it was, <laughs> I know you so well, friend. So, uh, with the evergreen courses, you'll be able to do the course. Even if you can't do it live, you'll be able to still get, uh, the videos and, um, and some one-on-one -on -one help with me. So those are coming, which is really exciting. Another thing I wanted to ask you so the fashion school dropout sweater, it's coming. And it's like the kind sweater or the friendship sweater. I forget the name of it. It's been so long. But remember the Ellis sweater? That's the next one. And that is going to be the next workshop. The Ellis sweater is a cable knit sweater. It's absolutely beautiful. I, I really, I impressed myself with it. It's a, what I love about it is it's a bottom up sweater. It's customizable. Um, and I, if you're, if you're scared of cables, uh, this would be an opportunity for you to do that. That's, that's going to be when the weather's cold though. So that's it for me. September, I will be at, uh, the affinity, which is Patty Lyons, uh, her, um, what the heck are those called? Like where, you, you know, it's like a you go away for a weekend and you knit and you're with community and that kind of thing. But I, I won't be an instructor. I'm going to be working with Tabitha and uh, we will have stuff for this, which is why I'm getting that done because September is coming up. Uh, the in bloom workshop is ready to go. It, uh, if you sign up uh, between now and August 24th, it starts it's a retreat. My gosh, Lynn, thank you so much. It's a retreat. Thank you. Regina and Debbie, you're all, you all have my back. Thank you so much. So it's a, re uh, at her retreat, I will be in the marketplace with Tabitha. And so that's in September. Um, Oct and then also the New Jersey, um, wool yarn festival is coming up. So I'll probably go as a, not as a, not anything. I'll just go to go. And then, um, you know what happens in October. I will be at Cake Palooza this year as a vendor. Uh, for those of you that have seen me as a vendor, Lynn, uh, I actually measure people when they're there. This year, I'm going to have uh, really cool uh, little things to take away with you. So if you would like to be measured by me and we can talk a little bit about what size sweaters work for you. I will also have some samples that uh, are no longer, you know, I have too many or some test knits that I no longer uh, use. I send, I sell those at a discount. I'm also probably going to have some other exciting things. So I'm really excited about that. So Missing out on Rhinebeck stuff. Oh, Steph, you're not going to do it this year. You know what? You know what's the great thing? Is that you'll be able to come next year. You'll be able, you know, maybe next year you'll come. And don't worry, I'll be there next year again. <laughs> but I have a feeling we're going to meet before then. Uh, so 
So all this exciting stuff is coming up. Let me know in the comments what you're knitting. It doesn't have to be mine. I, I don't always knit my stuff. I love to see what you're knitting. And I hope you're all having a wonderful summer. Hope you're able to do the things that you love with the people that you love. And if you can't, be with the people that you love, doing the things that you love. Um, I hope that you are what you love. And um, when life is hard and days are gray, I hope you all knit a rainbow or be the rainbow or color the rainbow or cook the rainbow or my favorite, eat the rainbow. And uh, I will see you all next week at this time. Thank you all for being here with me. Click that thumbs up button if you haven't already and subscribe for more stuff. Thanks so much.